Hey guys, Tarek Merryface here. Um, I was actually about to plan a flight simulator flight for um, for FSC. If you don't know what FSC is, it's this fantastic community. So it's, it's the homepage and it's really, really cool. We've got um, forums and basically what you do, you've got this, this client that you add on FSX so then you can find all these jobs and fly around the world and buy aircraft and it's pretty darn fun. So I picked a job to go from Pontoise LFPT to a military airfield in a Cessna 172, so I'm not saying it's realistic, but to EGWU, which is Northwoods. I can't say that properly, despite living in the UK. Isn't that embarrassing? So anyhow, we've got a flight and I want to plan it. So I thought it was a good opportunity to learn how to use Skyvector. So here's Skyvector. Skyvector is this website, completely free. You don't have to create an account or anything like that, and it can do VFR, IFR flights, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot more resources for the US, but we're flying in Europe, so let's get started. Just a quick thing, so you've got, uh, active, uh, you've got Sky Vector here, you've got the airports. This takes you to an airport page where you can look at the airports by name and country, etc. You've got different types of charts, move them around, you've got the forum, then you've got fuel prices, because this is for... Uh, Real world aviation, so they put fuel prices and FBOs in the US. Then you've got world VFR, world low charts, and world high charts. This is for Europe and the US, they've got a lot more charts. You've got a bunch of layers that adds all kinds of stuff like um, weather, wind, and we'll be using wind in a little bit for the flight planning, etc. Uh, etc. Et you've got a little crosshair here, and there is the coordinates of that crosshair, which is awesome. And next to that, you've got the time in Zulu. And the idea is if you can put that on your iPad and you've got like 3 or 4G on your iPad, you could fly on the plane and have this real time with winds and all kinds of other stuff including restricted airspace, etc, etc. Anyhow, let's get started. Um, so it is from LFPT, so what we're going to do is you might start like this, no flight plan. So you go here, click on flight plan, click on the bar and you write LFPT Pontoise add. I know this will pop up here, and there's a ground speed, 110 knots. Well, I'm doing a 172, so we can leave it at that. Total of zero miles in zero minutes, because I d haven't put the next location that I want to go to. So you've got Pontoise right here. And let's zoom in a tad. Le Bourget right there. Cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing a straight line between our departure and destination airfields. So EGWU is what we want. So we're going to go here, EGWU, easy peasy, enter, and it appears. Couldn't be easier than that. So we can zoom out and have a look. And there's our straight line, straight that way. I'm doing a VFR flight. However, that does not mean I can go straight, especially since they were over flying London. It's all this airspace to deal with. But as a bird eye view, it's 1 hour 35 minutes, and you've got 175 nautical miles. You've got a magnetic heading of 329 and a true heading of 328 for the great circle track, I think, of FNATIC for all my gen math. So it's all this useful information, and you give the, the leg information. So let's go ahead and zoom into Pontoise and start sorting out our nav. Now it's VFR flying. However, I'm not gonna be uh, not gonna make my life any more complicated, and I will use some some VORs. So I'm gonna go ahead and go straight to the one VOR. So if I drag the line, click there, all these pop up, and you can see there's some got a GPS uh, waypoint. If you just want to find a way, random waypoint, as we'll do in a second, you've got this. This is for the world low or high charts, one of those two, and then you've got the VOR itself. So you click that there, and it pops up here in the flight plan, the little flight plan window, really nice little window. And you've got a, you've got the, the frequency of the VOR, and now you've got an updated information. So it'll take me 20 minutes to get to Rouen. But we really don't want to do more than 15 minutes if we can help, if we can help it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to overfly this little airfield, Entrepagny. I'm just going to click there, and again it adds. So now we're just going to keep doing that along our flight plan. It's a good idea to go to, especially when you're going to go from shore to shore. You can fly over the, the drink. You can assume they've got all the proper uh, 
emergency equipments and done all the all the uh, blah 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 the flight plans to go abroad and VOR to VOR is a good idea when you're flying over a body of water so let's go ahead and do that and now we've got this beautiful airspace uh, which is a bloody nightmare um, don't need to be too realistic considering that we're landing at a military airfield but let's let's try and simulate a little bit of realism so we've got London Gatwick so we're not exactly going to go to London Gatwick so let's try and avoid that airspace and use VORs we're using a lot of VORs as you can see the Shoreham airfield here so we better watch out not to go into the Shoreham airspace we've got the airspace boundaries right here so flight level 195 to uh, um, 4500 feet so as long as I as long as I stay 4,500 feet or below, I should be fine in that kind of area without needing to contact anyone. Or I could just go ahead and contact them, whatever. So we've got all this busy airspace kind of stuff, but what we can do is have we have what well, what you'll see is that there's this giant airspace for Heathrow. So and this, and ob obviously the problem is here that. The military airfield is within Heathrow airspace, so we can't really simulate reality to them as much as we would like to, let's say. But we can give it a go. So what we'll do is we can't really use in settlements as landmarks because there's too many of them. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to fly all the way around, which blows. Got Farn Farnborough right there, but it's a tiny little airspace that we can fly over. Um, blah, blah, blah. By the way, um, for the Americans who might be confused, in Europe, big airports do not like little planes, and I mean really, really don't. It's not even a question of etiquette not to go there. It's a question of the law saying that we can't go in there. So that's why I'm making so much of a fuss. So what I'll do is. I'm going to go to fl overfly this airfield, Flatbush, keeping an eye out for Farnborough. I will overfly this airfield, and you can see there's a rail track here, so I can follow the railway line. So I can follow the railway line all the way to about there, right before London, and then fly into the airfield. And that's my route plan. And you've got this huge flight plan. And you see 206 nautical miles, uh, 1 hour 52 minutes. So that's how long it will take once you're in the air. So a nice rule of thumb for me when doing, when doing uh, little airplanes that I'd like to have a lot of margin when it comes to fuel. It's not an airliner. It's, we're not trying to save fuel to the maximum. So what I'll do is I'll say that I've got, I've got to put 1 hour and 52. Let's get a text box here text Come on. right cool 34 so we've got one hour and 53 let's always round it up even if it's less than five put five so one hour 53 plus um, 45 minute reserve which is a rule then we're gonna say 30 minutes 15 minutes per, per field for landing and approach VFR would have to be too precise. Um, da -da -da -da. And then my personal safety factor of 45 minutes. So we need a total. So 1 hour 53 is 113 minutes. So now I'm going to get my little calculator out because I cannot be bothered to actually do these calculations in my head. Even though it would probably be quicker. 45, 45 is 90. Plus fifty. Okay, so two hundred thirty-three minutes. That's the amount of fuel I need. Two hundred thirty-three minutes. Uh, that's the amount of fuel I need in my aircraft. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to FS economy. We're gonna click on the aircraft. Right there. I know what it is, but it's a good thing to always check. And what you'll see, it says ten gallons per hour. Well, that's great because we have a little nifty calculator right here. And what we'll say is that if it's 10 gallons per hour, is like 10 by 60. Mm -hmm. Complicated math right here. Okay, we've got this, this lovely number. So that means that's the amount of gallons we t uh, consume every minute. Multiply that by 233. And we now have 
39 gallons. Again, always round up 39 gallons. Let's make it 40 gallons, make it nice and even. There's no need to. Uh... So uh, that that's my particular rule. It can be anything. For example, add 10%. You don't even need to really. Uh, 45 minutes is the reserve. That's all you need. You just need to land with that. If, if I've got an extra hour and a bit of fuel, I should be relatively safe even from headwinds, especially headwinds, because we didn't check winds. So let's go ahead and show you that feature. So I'm going to zoom out and put my entire route on the screen, and then I'm going to go to layers. And I'm going to go to weather. I'm going to bring it down uh, here. And look at this. If I click on this directly, it's already on 3,200 feet. So I'd say it's a pr pretty good estimate. And as you can see, the wind is coming from the south uh, westish. If I bring up the altitude a little bit, let's say I want to do a different altitude right here. Bring it up, let's say 4,800 feet or the 850 um, millibar chart, then you see the winds are not that much different. Uh, it's unsurprising we're above 2,000 feet and this is now, uh, current time. So if you want to f see what it's like in three hours, do that. Just means a little bit stronger. 12 hours that 57 hours up to ridiculous amounts of times, which let's face it is not very realistic. So I'm just going to go back to now since it's flight sim and I don't need to wait any, any time at all. Uh, whew, there you go. Um, so that's the winds I'm going to be facing. So actually, what will happen is that most of the time I have a little bit of help, might get a little bit of a crosswind, pretty much a crosswind, right crosswind throughout the entire flight. Uh, the last last leg will be much shorter than the 13.7.5 uh, minutes promised. So let's look at this. You see this this right here. It's VOR to VOR, and it's a 35 minute leg, and that's actually the leg over the the water. So there's nothing we can do about it. We're just making sure it's not much longer than 15 minutes. Here we've got one that's at 18 minutes. Let's zoom in on that one and see if we can put anything in between as a as a reference point is just to make sure that we're going you know along the right way so all we're going to do is click on that and then add a point and all that does is that it adds this particular point as a waypoint and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be flying in that direction and when I reach here I should have this settlement to my right and somewhat in the distance another one there and then if I look to my 10 o'clock roughly I should see another another place there and to be honest this is just uh, to know more or less where we are along the line between the two VORs so there you go now let's have a look this is what I really like this really combines many things that you need to check in aviation uh, and I really like it it's quite cool also you can reverse this so that it goes from here to here instead of from here to here which is awesome so all you have to do is clear uh, click reverse so you can also check, see if there's any significant weather reports. And right here you got something. You've got uh, the reports. So we click on it, this thing pops up. And it says that there's frequent thunderstorms. Well, that's interesting. Uh, there's a line of them. Uh, and topping at 250. So that probably means I wouldn't be able to fly if I were to use real world weather. So. What I'll probably do is I'll, I'll use Active Sky and have a heck of a good time. But yeah, that means this flight would be cancelled if we were to fly right now to have to wait. So it's important to look at these things. Outlooks, I don't think there's anything. You've got air mitts, you've got icing, none. Turbulence. I like to look at these individually just to make sure. Instrument flight rules, none. These are a lot more common in, um, in the US. Then you've got the radar and satellite. Let's have a look at it. So you, straight away you can see these. And what you can see is that the weather is not too bad, but significant weather did say thunderstorm. So that's a bit of a clue that maybe this is not entirely accurate. But there are some red and some hot spots here. So we do have to be careful. And let's get rid of the wind. And you can take this off and do the infrared. It's a little bit more advanced. And there it is. And this shows it's relatively calm. So this shouldn't be too much of a problem really unless it's significant weather, which is probably the most concerning thing. If it were me, oops, sorry about that. Uh, if it were me, I would cancel this flight if it were real world. But it's not, so I'm going to go anyways. 
and have some fun. You got all this nav stuff. This is from like more like airliner type of stuff. If you guys don't know what North Atlantic tracks are, it's what we use. Well, what airliners use to cross the pond. Uh, and it's really really cool. I really like this feature because they keep them up to track, up to date. You've got all these east and west lines, and you've got Alpha Bravo, Charlie Delta, Echo Force, all of them going all the way down, showing which ones are active and at what time they're active, east to west and west to east. So it's really cool. I really like this. Uh, it's a nice, neat little thing. So there you go, Sky Vector. I've given you a good introduction. There are many more features, such as that I haven't shown, taken, taken you through. There's the FBO feature is quite cool, especially for real world pilots. Um, if you are a real world pilot trying to learn how to fly uh, using Sky Vector, it really is pish. Like you want, you're flying a Cessna 72 cross country. Click on 100 LL and all these little tags appear. Um, they give you basically all the FBOs with fuel available. And obviously, as you go closer, you get more of them. And you got the reward program. So if you're if you're on the AF trip program, there you go. <laughs> Bad luck, nothing there. So wing points, nothing. Bravo, nothing. Flybus, nothing. Flyby, sorry. And uh, safety press. You got all these things. TSA screening. Wow. Maybe I'm just having a bad day. So it's not fully, fully complete. That's why we always check these things first. And then the same goes for the Jet A. You can put all the stuff for the Jet A is available. And the MoGas, obviously. You've got all these currencies. So it gives you the correct currency. US, and it says per one US liter or pound. Which is awesome. US, you know, USG's liter or pound is pretty good. And if you need... Uh, UK gallons, imperial gallon, empirical gallons, then all you need to do is get out your little CRP or your little flight computer and, and change that. You got payment methods. You got all kinds of stuff. Look at that. US, US government air cards, Alliance, Avcard. US. But obviously, as you can see, they're not all there. None of them. It's just, this is not a complete feature. It's still being worked on. And you can ask more about it in the farms area here. So. I really, really like this. I think it's really cool for the real world pilots. So there you go. There you have it. As you can see, there's all these these charts available. CF-17 WAC, you got the en route, uh, low level 10 and 12, whatever it is. Sorry, I don't really know about US. And world high, this is just for everywhere. But I think this is quite cool. So there you go, you've got a specific area. So they've just put on the chart there and you can have a look, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. One thing I do not know how to do uh, is how to print the charts, and if you print them, how to print them to scale. That's something I am not sure how to do as, as of yet. And if anyone does know, please tell me. Final feature, final, final feature I will introduce you is a link. You can either embed this, so for example, if you have a website and you, and you offer flight sim, um, Flights basically, you can embed it on your website and tell people this is a flight plan for them. You can also just post a direct link, which is this one. You'll post it on Facebook in your group or post it to yourself if you're moving from your machine to your iPad, whatever. It's pretty damn handy. So there you go. That's it for today. That was the introduction to Sky Vector. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm going to go and enjoy this two hour long flight. Uh, yep. And add 30 minutes to that, and we're talking about a good 2 hours 20. So that's a long flight for a Cessna 172. But it'll be fun. It'll be fun, especially for a flight sim. Right. Uh, I'm Tarek Maryface. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and watch my other videos. I'll see you guys next time, and happy flying.